Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Are you tired of paying sky high prices for quality reptile supplies? Well, it doesn't have to be that way. You have to look no further than your local neighborhood dollar store for a lot of very useful items that you can use in reptile keeping. Don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating low prices over a quality, but I've used all of these items extensively and I found them to be equal to, if not better than, many much more highly priced alternatives. Just a disclaimer, many of the items you'll need for keeping and breeding boas are inherently expensive and they're made in very small amounts, usually by small cottage industry type mom and pop shops. So they're gonna be expensive. And I'm not advocating that you try to skimp on money in those areas. For example, thermostats are very expensive and you can probably expect to pay a few hundred dollars for a good thermostat like a Herbstat. In addition, you shouldn't try to skimp in the quality to save money on your snake's food source. So if your local neighborhood dollar store starts stocking frozen rodents, you probably want to avoid those. In addition, the tools at the dollar store should be avoided at all costs because the quality is really pretty piss poor, which isn't surprising given that they only cost a dollar each to produce. One need for your boa that the dollar store has a plethora of different solutions is the hiding places. And there are numerous small plastic items at the dollar store that are very easy to convert into very high quality hiding places. So to start with, they have these drawer organizers. They come in different sizes. And you can see this one is about six inches square. This one is about six inches by eight inches. But these are really good for baby and small subadult boas. And it's really simple to make a hiding place just by cutting a small access hole in the front like I did with this one. And so I recommend using a soldering iron to melt the access hole rather than a saw because the soldering iron leaves, leaves nice, smooth, not sharp edges. So these are great for the small to medium sub-adults. For larger boas, medium-sized boas, these oil pans work really well. Obviously, you don't want to use it after it's contained oil, but you get it for a dollar. You can just cut out an access hole and these are great for a boa of about five to six feet. They love to just curl up inside, makes them feel nice and safe, and it's nice and dark inside. And then for a slightly larger boa, probably up to about seven or eight feet, these litter pans for cats make a great solution. Again, you just cut a hole and the boa can hide inside. So I've actually seen similar hiding places made of this black plastic about the same size that are made specifically for reptiles and they're like 10 or $15 each. So you can get basically the same thing for a dollar at the dollar store. Another highly recommended accessory for your boa's cage are these water bowls that you can get at the dollar store. These are made of plastic. They're about eight inches in diameter and about three inches deep. And they come in a number of different colors, uh, including a tan, which is a little less bright if you don't like the bright colors. But I found these they are the perfect water bowl for most sub-adult and adult boas. They actually have a smaller one that's about four inches in diameter that you can use for a baby boa. So I found that my boas are not able to tip these over. Very rarely have I had a boa tip it over and they are very easy to clean. Just add a little dish soap and hot water and they clean right up with no residue. Before I used these, I had these, these metal bowls that have this rubber gasket on the bottom. They're also a shallow bowl that boas can't tip over. And they cost about $10 each, you know, about 10 times the amount of these. But I found with those bowls, they got really, really dirty. They were hard to clean. Urates and feces would get stuck in the little rubber gasket, which would, you know, wear down and basically break off after about a year. And also water would get stuck and they, they would form these water stains on the side of the dish, which was very hard to clean. Whereas these are much easier to clean. So perfect water dish for most adult boas. The dollar store is a good source for a lot of the different types of tapes that you use in boa keeping. So they offer this packing tape and this works really well for packing up boxes containing bows to ship out. They have this painter's tape and I found this was really good 
for use in, in attaching thermostat probes, in attaching wires in place on racks, things like that. And then masking tape also works well for attaching wiring in place and attaching uh, probes and other various applications. So I get a lot of tape from the dollar store. I've also found that they have extension cords. And so the main reason for I buy these, besides use as an extension cord, is it's a convenient wire and plug that I use to attach to the flex watt heat tape when I'm wiring up my racks. And basically you just cut the little three-way adapter off and then you have the plug and you use this to wire up your flex watt heat tape. You can also cut lengths of wire from it if you're gonna wire up a parallel circuit with multiple flex watt heat tapes, but it works really well for that and you know, the price can't be beat. Another shipping related item I get at the dollar store are zip ties. And so zip ties are the perfect solution to keeping your snake in its bag when it's being shipped. So basically after you pack up the snake in the bag, you can use this little cord they provide to tie a loose knot, but then to really secure it in place, you just put a zip tie like this. And then tighten. Okay, I usually just cut off the remainder there, but it works great for keeping your snake in place during shipping. The most common way that people are accidentally bitten by their pet boa is during feeding accidents. So it's really imperative that you have a tool that you can use to provide some space between the snake's mouth and your hand. And some people use tongs or expensive tweezers, what I found, what works best for me, is this inexpensive grabbing tool that I get at the dollar store. And so basically you can just grab a rodent, you can dangle it in front of your snake, and it gives about two and a half feet of protection between the food item and your hand, just to ensure that you don't get bitten. And so these work really well. Again, I haven't found a better solution and it's available for the bargain price of just one dollar. You'll want to keep a record of all your snakes feeding, shedding, and other activities. And for this, I will planning on coming out with a video specifically on this topic in the near future, but I often use index cards, particularly for my babies. And so I can write the information on these index cards. And so the dollar store is a good source of index cards. You get 200 for a dollar. These are the three by five size. You can also get the four by six size, which have a little bit more room if you'd like a slightly larger index card, but highly recommended for keeping track of your snake's records. Maintenance of proper humidity is imperative to avoid shedding issues and other health problems in your boa constrictor. And for this, you can get a little sprayer for just a dollar at the dollar store. And so typically I'll spray down my boas, tubs, or enclosure a few times a week. I just wet the substrate, usually either aspen or uh, uh, the coconut husk bedding, and it absorbs the moisture. But inexpensive sprayer, recommend that you pick one up for your snake to maintain its humidity. One last item I get at the dollar store that are great in boa keeping are these smooth black pebbles. They come in these little bags. And I found that these are the perfect background for photographing boas against. So boas, as you probably know if you tried to photograph them, they don't like to hold still, especially when they don't feel secure. So they need this tactile sense on their belly that they're supported and that they're not in danger. And so these rocks are the perfect solution. Basically, I get a tub and I fill it with the rocks to a layer about two inches deep which I think for this tub I had to use three or four of these bags. And when the boas are, are sitting on these rocks, it feels safe because it's surrounded by these the rocks in all directions on its sides, and they will cooperate for photography a lot better than with other backgrounds. The dark rocks are also the perfect contrast for many boa colors. Um, although they do have other colored rocks like white rocks like crushed quartz and natural river pebbles if you want to try that. But I found that the black pebbles are the perfect background for many boa photography applications 
especially for photographing baby boas that I'm going to sell. To end the video, I wanted to share with you a couple of my favorite locality boas. This is a 2016 holdback female Suriname true red tail boa. And this animal is from the first litter produced by my male Prometheus. It was probably my most well-known snake in my collection. And I crossed him with a Florida red tails female and this beautiful litter resulted that I'm currently growing up uh, several of these animals. And so I've always really liked this female. She just has these beautiful symmetrical peak saddles, uh, this beautiful reddish pinkish side coloration. And you can see this really long, high contrast, bright red tail. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. She's starting to get some more muscular development um, as she's approaching adulthood. I also really like the personality of this animal. She's not quite as high strung as some of my other true red tails. You can see she's kind of squeezing, but I still have some feeling in my fingers. Um, and just a really neat boa. She's quite interactive with me and you know she doesn't try to get away or you know do anything crazy. Just a real nice beautiful boa that really epitomizes all of the best qualities of what I'm looking for in a true red tail. Another favorite locality boa of mine is the six-year-old Coral Island boa, boa constrictor Sabogue, produced by Vin Russo. And so this is an adult animal. He had his first litter last year and produced a litter of five babies. I have him paired up this year with another female, so I'm hopeful that I'll have some more of these to offer later this year. And so the Sabogue boas, as you can see, they're a little more active than the true red tails. He moves around quite a bit. They're adapted to an arboreal lifestyle and living in trees in the wild. So they're a little bit longer and more slender than most other boas. And they've really grown on me over the years. I didn't really like them when I first got them, but I've really come to love these boas. They're just so graceful and their body plan is so long and delicate and just beautiful looking animal. You can see this guy is pretty much patternless. He just has some tail blotches, not really saddles. And he's got this beautiful golden ochre brown color. Um, they also have one of the coolest head shapes of any boa constrictor with these long flattened heads with these flared nostrils and really prominent, beautiful gold or orange eyes. Just a really breathtaking boa to look at. The, Pearl Island Boa, Boa Constrictor, Sibogue. So that's a little bit about these boas. I hope this episode was helpful and maybe inspired you on some supplies you can get at your local dollar store. I'd always love to hear your tips as well as far as for herping on a budget, so please comment below. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.